What's up guys, in this video what I want to do is show you how to manipulate a polynomial so therefore you can factor it. So if I were to give you a problem like this, x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 4y squared, and I said factor it, there's a couple things that I want you to think about. One, I got to rewrite this as a multiplication problem, right? So immediately when students look at a problem like this, I think the first way that our brain usually goes, because when we're talking about factoring, first thing we always talk about or think about is the GCF, like factoring out the greatest common factor. But I don't think it takes you know many students or very long to be able to realize that they all don't share anything in common. So in this example, what we're going to do is actually use our special factoring techniques. And that's going to be the perfect square trinomials as well as the difference of two squares. And those are going to be two things that I think just with practice, I think is going to be something that you're going to need to or want to go ahead and rely on. All right. And so when you're looking at this problem, you recognize that you know, they don't have anything in common. So what, you know, what else can I do? Like, how can I factor this? It's like, I can't factor them by groups of twos, right? These have no, um, nothing in common. These have an X in common. But you know, again, I need to rewrite this whole expression um, as a product. So one thing, though, that I do recognize is, and again, this comes down to your experience with recognizing or at least completing um, perfect square trinomials. The recognize here, this perfect square trinomial, whenever you have your last term is squared, I'm sorry, your first term is squared and your last term is squared, I want you to think either a difference of two squares or a perfect square trinomial. So how do we know if it is a perfect square trinomial or if it's just, you know, the first number squared and last number squared? Well, that all comes down to, again, this relationship of our perfect square trinomials. So a perfect square trinomial looks something like this, right? So we have um, our last, our first term squared and a last term squared. And then if you look at your middle term, what you have is going to be two times the square root basically of your c squared. So that's just going to be a regular c. Now again, a lot of times I know we talk about quadratics like a b. I'm just going to represent that b as a 2 times c, OK? So basically, if you have your last term is squared, then you're going to take the square root of it to find c, right, and then multiply it by 2. If I have this relationship, I can quickly go ahead and factor it. Now again, notice I did a plus or minus because you know, it can be, it works for if it's positive or if it works for negative, um, either way. But the factoring is also going to be important here. So let's go and make sure then at least my visual that I thought it, that I thought it was a perfect square term, let's make sure that makes sense. Square number, square number, right? Now, if I take the square root of 9, which obviously is a square number, so I can, that's going to be a 3. Is my middle term 2 times 3, which is 6, right? Yeah, you can see. Okay, cool. So how do you factor this? Now, now a lot of students, obviously, on an easy um, perfect square term, you would say, like, oh, you know, what two numbers multiply to give you 9, add to give you negative 6, that's going to be negative 3, right? But sometimes we're going to have problems with like fractions, or sometimes the problem is not going to be that simple. So I do want to give you this relationship of how you can take any perfect square trinomial and rewrite it down in a factored form. So there we go. It's just going to be x plus or minus the c um, quantity squared. Now again, this is all dependent on this being your square term. And a lot of times, if this was represented here as like a b, then we would say like that's going to be the b divided by two, right? Because again, think about it. Like b, um, take this number divided by two. That's just going to give you back your c. So this is going to be my factored form, and let's go and see what that creates over here. So if I took a um, square root of 9, it's going to be 3. And again, it's plus or minus, because if this is positive, then that's positive. If that's negative, then that's negative. In this case, we have a negative. So therefore, this is going to be a x minus a 3 quantity squared. Now, over here, you look at this and you say, well, negative 4 y squared, like, what else am I really going to be doing in this case? And there's really a lot of times I'd probably say, well, I don't know, right? But again, like, if I just write this as a minus a 4 y, I still haven't factored this down. Like, I factored this, but I didn't complete my factoring process. So what I recognize here, though, is I have this written now as like two terms. And whenever I think of something as two terms, I either want to factor out GCF or think about either the difference of two cubes or the difference of two squares. Now, obviously, these are raised to the second power. I'm going to think of the difference of two squares. Now, the difference of two squares, just like a perfect square trinomial, is something I think I want you to have ingrained with your factoring. And again, it's something that we should have kind of like on autopilot. And the reality, guys, is just the more practice you work with factoring the difference of two squares, the factoring of perfect square trinomials, this the better and better you're going to get at it. However, right now, this is not rewritten as a square term minus another square term. So what I need to do is be able to rewrite a 4y squared as something squared. So what we can do in this case is I can actually um, rewrite this as like saying, all right, well, what term like multiplied by itself is going to give me a 4y squared? Right? And again, use, thinking about this using the properties of exponents, like 2y times 2y is going to be 4y squared. Or you could also distribute that, right? That's going to be a 2 squared, which is 4, and a y squared. So, so now what I can do is just rewrite this. So now it's going to be in the form of my difference of two squares. OK? And now what I want you to recognize is saying, like, hey, this is now in the form of a squared minus a b squared, right? Where a, you can say, is going to be my x minus 3, and my b is going to be the 2y. So now let's just go and rewrite it in this form for my um, difference of two squares. 
Okay, so in this case, I had to go and use a little bit of double parentheses. We don't really need the parentheses though on the inside, right? Because I can't combine any of these terms and I'm actually not multiplying these. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and drop my parentheses and just rewrite my final answer. So there was factoring by using the perfect square integral as well as difference of two squares. Now, if you're a little bit uneasy on the difference of two squares, then check out the next video I have for you where I actually do difference of the two squares in the same problem three different times. I'll see you there.